So from the battery of uh, these uh, recursion examples that uh, everybody has to use uh, by law. So uh, we can encounter now the third one. So it was the factorial Fibonacci and then this uh, Tower of Hanoi. So this one is also a branching recursion, but uh, this one is a very different kind from uh, the Fibonacci recursion. The Fibonacci recursion became exponential because uh, we uh, traversed uh, through the space of a linear number of possibilities uh, in exponentially many ways. So uh, that one could be eliminated with uh, the memoization. Uh, then uh, uh, the function remembers what it has done so far so that it won't uh, do that again. But uh, this next uh, recursion, so this one is uh, also branching and this one is inherently exponential as these uh, combinatorial things uh, always tend to be. So a good thing those combinatorial generators, they generate one at a time instead of uh, filling your entire memory with uh, all the uh, possibilities. So uh, uh, what was the, let, let me hear. So then uh, this uh, Tower of Hanoi, so uh, this one also demonstrates a couple of good ideas of uh, uh, recursion. So uh, this, uh, it is a good problem and uh, this is a very interesting problem if you scroll down the Wikipedia page. So the rules of the game uh, is that the setup, so this in this picture, you have a bunch of so you have a bunch of disks on three pegs. Basic version of game there's always three pegs, and we notice that the disks are different sizes so that we can tell them apart. Here they're also color coded, and there's a hole in the center so in to enforce the spatial discipline that you're only allowed to access the uh, the formation from the top. So uh, the rule of the game is that, uh, well, the goal, you have to get all the disks uh, from the first uh, peg to the third one. And just so that you cannot uh, flip them over as a pile of pancakes, so rules are in place that uh, you are only allowed to handle uh, one disk at a time. And uh, then you take out the disk, so you can uh, put it uh, in a peg before you're allowed to take another one. So you cannot store the disks uh, on the side. Now that might be an interesting variation of the problem somebody has probably looked into that. And then uh, also to enforce the discipline that you cannot just uh, one by one uh, flip the pancakes over. Uh, the dis discipline says that at any point in time, so uh, no matter what uh, stage you're at, uh, in every peg, uh, whatever disks you have, have, have in that peg, uh, they have to be in sorted order or shorter equivalent uh, rule. It never can put a larger disk uh, on top of a smaller one at any point. So now, since there's always exactly three pegs, so what if the number of disks increases? So it's not immediately obvious, at least not to me, wasn't that, uh, that uh, within these uh, constraints uh, of for motion, that it's even possible that there's enough space to solve the problem. But it uh, turns out that there is. And uh, the recursive solution, so it has a very interesting uh, fractal nature also. So uh, then uh, that illustrates us uh, some uh, in various interesting things. But the recursive solution also, then there's a couple of good programming techniques that we can also point out. So here, the implementation of Tower of Hanoi. Uh, your task is to move n disks that are currently on top of the source peg, and uh, you're supposed to get them to the target peg. So at the top level call, so n is your number of total disks, and uh, then uh, the source peg is one, and uh, the target uh, peg is three. So let's say uh, for the old time puzzle, so let's uh, be like a normal people and start uh, counting from one. So the pegs are one, two, three. So what is the base case? So here is now our first uh, good teachable moment uh, about the uh, recursion. So uh, the, remember this uh, normal human tendency to think that uh, everything is always one or more. So uh, no system is ever designed for zero because nobody would ever do that. But uh, in a recursion, so always ask yourself, so can I, if I have my base case, is it uh, truly the simplest? Uh, can I even uh, simplify it further? So here, uh, the simplest case, uh, so a normal person would say uh, is to move uh, one disk. But uh, then as a programmer, uh, we immediately ask, uh, can we go lower than that? And uh, 
then uh, we, we realize that the simplest case is uh, the case n equals zero when uh, the correct thing to do is to do nothing because if you do anything you're, you're doing something that you weren't supposed to. So now the base case uh, that the n equals zero so we could have written it uh, that way but uh, another just uh, good habit to acquire the base case of the recursion so why am I testing n less than one. So uh, this one uh, makes the code more robust. So uh, the functions uh, have to work uh, for legal arguments and uh, in my credit labs uh, the automated tester never gives you any legal arguments but uh, in the real world so mistakes happen and unexpected happen so what if somebody asks the solution for Hanoi for minus seven uh, disk. So uh, that shouldn't happen because it doesn't make any sense, but uh, it's not illegal. So uh, robustness uh, means that they uh, can gracefully handle situations that are outside uh, the normal legal parameters. So then uh, this kind of a way to write the base cases uh, inequality is more robust because this one also catches uh, catches for us for free all the negative end or things that shouldn't happen but uh, could happen so it doesn't cost us anything to be safe. So in base cases try to push the base case as low as you can and uh, then uh, also make the base case testing to be robust. Okay then here's another old uh, time trick. Uh, integer arithmetic uh, can often do the work of a decision. So the problem is that uh, you have an index of the current source peg and the index of the current target peg and uh, now you're supposed to calculate uh, the, what is the index of the third peg uh, that we're gonna be using as the intermediate storage space in, the, in this uh, algorithm. So we could write uh, if else ladder, so if source equals one and target equals two, then we assign mid equals uh, three, and else if uh, source equals one and, uh, and target equals three, then mid is two. So we could do it this way, but uh, let's uh, use the arithmetic uh, to do it as a one-liner. Uh, one plus two plus three is six. Therefore, if you take the known sum and subtract the two known values, whatever's left, has to be the third value, does it not? So uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, trick normally used to flip between two values. Uh, you have a variable like a flip between three and seven. So if it three becomes seven, I and mean, if it seven becomes three, so you just say that variable equals uh, 10 minus the value does the same thing. So then uh, this idea now generalizes for more numbers. So uh, one, uh, one, uh, one integer arithmetic uh, assignment uh, does the work of uh, if else ladder. So uh, mid is what we're gonna be using as a storage space and uh, to, this is now an exponentially branching recursion the chain reaction of course one call to Hanoi generates uh, exactly two so no more and no less so that's uh, unconditional. Well that makes the uh, arithmetic easy so how many total calls are made so this gonna be making an exp two to the power of n minus one I think uh, calls uh, to the n so as it says on the page so this, uh, this uh, puzzle is a good example of a uh, exponential thing. So this idea that uh, when something is exponential uh, it uh, nice and easy for a small n but uh, then there comes an inflection point where suddenly the running time just uh, run, gets out of hand as your n increases. So uh, this uh, realization important that uh, if, it's, if something's exponential, so uh, then the something's uh, better be a very small n. So this uh, uh, puzzle with the made up story of some kind that uh, somewhere in the distant Asia, I guess all these magical things always happen there in that time, that uh, uh, some uh, monks are playing this game for reals and uh, move one uh, uh, disk per second, they have 64 disks, so 2 to the power of 64 minus 1, so we realize that, uh, okay, 42, the magic number appeared, so <laughs> uh, then, uh, then we're not uh, worried about the world ending when the monks uh, complete this game. Uh, there's another old time uh, similar story, the, the inventor of chess asking for a reward, uh, the, the, I, whatever the king loved the game so much so just wanted a little bit of rice so one uh, grain to the first square of chessboard and the two grains to the second and four and eight six and uh, then uh, so we can do the math again so how many earth uh, fulls of rice uh, would that kind of uh, amount be so exponential things that uh, they tend to grow 
uh, grow uh, very quickly. So uh, the curve, uh, it's gonna, uh, when we draw it on a whiteboard in scale, so it's gonna run on the top, out of the top of the whiteboard and then a step to the right, it's out of the atmosphere and a couple of steps to the right, it's uh, out of the solar system, couple of more steps were out of the galaxy and, uh, and so on. So exponential combination, there's just uh, too many of them, so exponential is bad. Now this uh, problem is uh, so interesting, we can take a look at the, the shape of the, the state space, the, all the configurations that the system can be in. So they, they, the possible configurations, uh, the way that the three disks can be, so uh, they have a very nice uh, fractal structure, the Sierpinski triangle. So, uh, the, why, the, so each one of these uh, nodes uh, is one possible legal way to have uh, the, the disks uh, on the pegs and then uh, for the possible moves available in the situation. So uh, then uh, uh, leading to a neighboring state. So uh, the goal is to get from one corner uh, to the other. So why is the state space of this kind of a triangle made of triangles? Because we realize that the largest disk, uh, it doesn't care, it's like the 500 pound gorilla, so wherever it wants. So, so the largest disk uh, can be in one of the three uh, pegs. So what is uh, thirds, the, the, uh, the subdivided triangles correspond to the places where the largest disk is. And then for the second largest disk, so there is uh, uh, three possible ways that it can be. So uh, once the largest disk has set, uh, has laid down, so the second disk doesn't care where anybody else is going. And this way, so a triangle consisting of a three triangles uh, without the center. So we had a Sierpinski triangle uh, state space. So if you wanna get from one corner to another, so the distance there, even if you take the shortest route, always doubles uh, as a number of uh, disks. So uh, this problem is inherent, the exponential so notice that along in the path, no configuration ever repeats, so the LRU cache memoization doesn't help, because uh, then uh, so no sub-problem ever comes up again, so remembering it for the future is a pointless activity.